Good morning, everybody, and welcome to this week's edition of Keeping an Eye on the Geopolitical Ball with me, Jamie Shea, Senior Fellow at Friends of Europe. Whenever there's a new administration in Washington, one of the first questions that comes up in terms of foreign policy is, what are we going to do about uh, Russia? Uh, the beginning of the Obama administrations and the Trump administrations uh, showed a desire for a reset with Russia. Hillary Clinton, when she was the US Secretary of State, uh, even presented to Sergei Lavrov a big red button with reset marked on it. Apparently it was a mistranslation from the Russian, but it signified at least the idea that the relationship could be as if by magic uh, rebooted. President Trump said that uh, everybody would uh, understand uh, that it would be better to have a good relationship with Russia rather than a bad relationship with Russia. Few would dissent from that, but of course it depends on what are the terms and what are the uh, conditions. Uh, in the past, uh, those hopes for a reset uh, gathered dust rather quickly. Russia annexed to Ukraine, uh, or Crimea at least, uh, in 2014 and uh, sent its troops into eastern Ukraine. It intervened in Syria, uh, later on in Libya. It organized uh, aggressive cyber attacks, uh, propaganda and hybrid warfare campaigns against the uh, West. Uh, and it violated arms control agreements uh, while clamping down on the human rights of its own citizens. In the wake of all of this, it's hardly surprising that there doesn't seem to be any talk yet from the new Biden administration of a reset uh, with Russia. But paradoxically, at this very moment, it seems to be the Russian side that's suggesting a reset. Dmitry Peskov, President Putin's spokesman, has suggested uh, new talks and new negotiations to solve uh, outstanding uh, uh, problems. So if we are going to sit down again with Russia, what should be the Western terms of conditions to make this a productive dialogue? I would argue four things. Number one, we should ask and expect Russia to give up its mafiosi uh, behavior which is not worthy of a responsible state actor. The aggressive cyber attacks, like the most recent sonar winds penetration of American government uh, software, uh, the interference in the uh, elections, uh, the use of chemical weapons in, in an English town such as Salisbury to kill uh, British citizens, and which could have had much more dire consequences, the assassinations of opposition uh, leaders in Berlin uh, and uh, uh, elsewhere. We should insist that Russia start behaving like a normal, transparent uh, state in the international system. Uh, secondly, uh, arms control. Uh, one of the things that Russia has done is to violate arms control agreements. For example, the Americans withdrew from the Intermediate Nuclear Forces Treaty uh, uh, last year, uh, precisely because Russia had violated the treaty by deploying uh, new generations of missiles. This week, the Rus Russia pulled out of the Open Skies Treaty, which allows us to monitor uh, from the air military activity and to build uh, uh, confidence. Now, President Biden has announced that he's ready to extend the START Treaty on Nuclear uh, strategic missiles by a further five years. That should give us time uh, to build a new framework to negotiate arms control with Russia, for example, including new technologies like hypersonic weapons. But in the meantime, the Russians could announce their willingness to come back into the Open Skies Treaty or the Intermediate Nuclear Forces Treaty, and they could help the United States by putting pressure on Iran to come back into compliance with the Iran nuclear deal. The third thing that Russia could do, and I referred to this earlier, is desist from this uh, aggressive uh, cyber campaigns, uh, which are only uh, inducing the United States to take retaliatory action Action. We all depend uh, on cyberspace and the digital space, including Russia, uh, for our economic health and well-being uh, uh, these days. None of us have an interest in wrecking it or undermining public confidence in it. And what the US and Russia could do is to sign an agreement uh, on responsible behavior in cyberspace and to desist uh, on both sides uh, from attacking uh, critical government systems and infrastructure. Finally, Russia could help the West to solve regional conflicts. It's clear that there's going to be no stability in Syria as long as Assad is still in power and that Russia could move towards elections there uh, and an agreement between the different parties. 
and it could pull out its forces. Similar, Russia promised to withdraw its own foreign fighters like the Wagner mercenary group from Libya, but hasn't so far done so. It could support the United Nations there to bring the parties to the table and to carry out the elections which are scheduled for uh, December of this year. It could again pull out its mercenaries from African countries like the Central African Republic and help dialogue to move forward. Uh, in the meantime, there are two things that we need to do across the Atlantic to prepare for our dialogue with Russia. Number one, to agree on packages of further sanctions, uh, not just on oligarchs, uh, if Russia continues its uh, rather negative stance and uh, behavior. That way, at least the Russians will know what they will be avoiding if they choose a more cooperative stance. Secondly, we need to remove irritants across the Atlantic, which could make it more difficult for the EU uh, and the US to speak with one voice, like the Nord Stream 2 pipeline project, project to, build, uh, to produce uh, uh, for Germany more Russian natural gas. If this project is going to go ahead, Okay, so be it, but at least make sure that we do not become dependent upon Russian gas supplies and that we diversify those supplies. We help Ukraine with its own energy uh, and, and so on. Uh, so there may be a, a, a Moscow induced reset in the relationship, but we need to make sure that we go into it with our eyes not wide shut, but wide open and our terms and conditions crystal clear. Thank you for watching and I look forward to engaging with you this time next week.